in the wake of Barca thrashing Rosengard 6-0 and the manager's bullish comments about that victory, it was interesting to look at how he set up his team in this 5-4-1 shape but still struggled to prevent his team being blown out the water by Barca whose possession heavy style allowed their defence to actually shine and through that score 7. Let's get into it. Barca were utterly dominant this game. They blew away Rosengard, even with the ref not awarding a few penalty kicks, both in the 10th minute and then much later um, in the 52nd minute as well. Regardless of Barcelona's dominance, I still wanted to have a look at their tactic as well as Rosengard's. And so starting in the first minute with Barca setting up as per usual in a 2-4-D, although it will be quick to move to more of a 3-2 shape with Bate pushing to left wing. This being against Rosengard initially starting off in this 4-4-2 shape but that will move to more of a 5-4-1 as Larson drops into more of a right wing back position. Okay so Barca's 3-2 or 3-1 starts initially with Binya staying relatively deep to partner Kira Walsh but as they progress into Rosengard's defensive third Pina will join Caldente and Bonmati as these roaming number eights between the lines with Barriuelo then positioning more central as the centre forward keeping the Rosengard back five honest. So as I mentioned, Padrewello has narrowed. This allows Bate to push into her left wing position in that 3-1 or 3-2 shape, which will inevitably force Larson into that right wing back position to try and counter Barca's ridiculous width. As in this sequence, Barca consistently rotated possession to test Rosengard's defence. This came both in passing the ball into those channels for Graham Hansen and Batier, but then also pinging the ball into the likes of Aitana, Caldente, Pina to test Rosengard's defence in those central spaces, making sure that they had the right distances between the players, that their line wasn't too high up the pitch given Barca third player runs, but also that they could get out to cut backs to the likes of Kira Walsh on the edge of the box. On top of grinding Rosengard down, Barca maintained a very short distance between their attack and defence, I'd say approximately 15 to 20 yards, helping Barca to win back possession in seconds but also because of just how high the defenders were positioned that meant that Marta Torrejon could sneak in at the back post to threaten on crosses or cutbacks without leaving her team exposed defensively. And so we get to see in this phase of play some of that unrelenting press with Barca getting numbers around the ball on Rosengard regaining possession and so unsurprisingly Jensen struggles here allowing Barca to easily regain possession. Of course this also creates momentum for Barcelona limiting the energy of the Rosengard players limiting their numbers and coordination of their counterattacks. Juxtapose Barca's defence to Rosengard's here, where the captain Skull is trying to start the counterattack. She's forced into making quick decisions and execute difficult passes under duress due to Barcelona's counterpress. Whereas Rosengard generally, as we saw, just contained or covered. Of course, they doubled up in those wide spaces, but Barca were rarely put under pressure, allowing Barca to easily set back up into their preferred shape, that 3-1-3-3 three, 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 against that 5-4-1. Skipping ahead slightly, I just wanted to include this phase of play too, because after heavily overloading one side of the pitch, typically this left-hand side, Barca sought to quicken the play with a switch or a through ball out towards the right hand side for Graham Hansen allowing her to become isolated 1v1 against the defender Samuelson or alternatively they could play a through ball for Torrejan or Graham Hansen trying to run in behind. Given Rosengard are essentially playing a back five this quickening of play is essential to prevent them from being able to set up with all those numbers correctly and punishes them for over covering to the left hand side. Okay so moving on to the 17th minute we've got Pariuelo's cross from that left hand side and we'll just briefly pull to point out Torrejon who typically was the right centre back but we see her here positioned in the opposition penalty area to potentially threaten the cross and of course to balance that out Batier instead is playing as a left sided centre back. Although Barca did later in that first half start to play more of a 2-1 shape still compressing the space but a lot more license really to both fullbacks to be in attacking positions. In contrast to Barca's slow methodical build up Rosengard essentially were trying to get as far up the pitch as possible in as few passes as possible because their 2-3, two, 2-3 three, two, three deep builder more often than not got them in trouble. And so it seemed that Rosengard's best route to goal appeared to be Mukasa playing long goal kicks and then Rosengard trying to force an error or win a second ball. And so that's why I've included this scenario here where through their persistence and a bit of fortune, Rosengard managed to win for them 
himself a corner kick. But of course, unsurprisingly, relying on your team creating high quality chances where their pressing is average at best wasn't a very fruitful means of chance creation. Anyway, moving to the 72nd minute, we briefly get to see Rosengard in that 2 3 shape after Ahmed Dottir's pass back to Makassa. At this point, Barca's playing more of um, a 4 1 4 1 press where as the ball goes to one side or the other, the near sided wide centre midfielder will help Oshawalo by pushing up to go and press towards the centre back. And then as the ball goes towards the opposite side for them, they'll drop back and then the other wide centre midfielder will push out. So Makassa is forced into playing it long. We can see the two wide midfielders for Rosengard between the lines, hoping to capitalise on any knockdowns or passes through the lines. But of course, inevitably, Barcelona get back in possession. They set back up into their 3-2 shape, although now with Vicky Lopez as the centre midfielder partnering Kira Walsh and Marta Torrejan at right centre back, say so that they were still playing more of the 2-1 shape as they progressed up the pitch, given that both Batier and Bronze are extremely attacking fullbacks and I say that in comparison to Torrejon's attacking intent Lucy Bronze was a lot more aggressive in her overlapping runs so with that thanks for watching if you've enjoyed the video consider sharing on social media subscribing and with that we're out